Here we'll be using Cavalieri's principle in three dimensions to compare the volumes of different solids. But first, let's look at Cavalieri's principle with a two-dimensional shape. Take a look at this shape here. Suppose its horizontal length is 8. And if you look at the width of this shape, you can see it has the same width everywhere along the shape. And let's say this width is 3. What's the area of this shape? If you're not sure, click down here to review Cavalieri's principle in two dimensions. Nicely done! In two dimensions, Cavalieri's principle says that if two shapes have the same height and matching widths everywhere along the height, then the shapes must have the same area. For example, these two triangles have the same height and they also have matching widths everywhere along the height. So by Cavalieri's principle, they have the same area. Now in three dimensions, Cavalieri's principle says that if two shapes have matching areas everywhere along the height, then they must have the same volume. So to get started in three dimensions, here's a hexagonal prism, which is a prism whose base is a hexagon. Suppose the base of this prism has an area of 3, and the vertical height of this prism is 4. What's the volume of this prism? Click down here if you'd like to review. Great! Next, let's see Cavalieri's principle in action. The vertical height of this prism will not be changing, but we're going to cut the prism up into lots of slices and then move those slices around. The volume of the entire prism is the sum of the volumes of all these slices, and because we're just moving them around and not changing their sizes, the volume of this whole prism has not changed. Let's move the slices back so we have a right prism again where the top face is directly over the bottom base. And now let's move them back out, so again we have an oblique prism, where the top face is off to the side. So what's the volume of this oblique hexagonal prism? Nicely done. The volume is still 12, which is the area of the base times the vertical height. Next, let's take a look at another oblique prism. Let's say the base of this prism is a pentagon with an area of 3.5, and the vertical height of this prism is 6. So what's the volume of this oblique pentagonal prism? Excellent! Now remember that the volume formula, the area of the base times the height, also works for finding the volumes of cylinders. So take a look at this oblique cylinder here. Its base is a circle with radius 2, and its vertical height is 5. So what's the volume of this oblique cylinder? Nicely done. So in three dimensions, Cavalieri's principle says that if solids have the same height and matching areas everywhere along the height, then they have the same volume. This is still true even if the solids don't have the same shape. For example, take a look at these two solids, a rectangular prism and a cylinder. Notice that they have the same height, and they also have matching areas everywhere along the height. So by Cavalieri's principle, these two solids must have the same volume. By the way, another name for a slice that cuts through a solid is cross-section. Next, let's take a look at these three solids here. All three have the same vertical height, and they have matching cross-sectional areas, meaning everywhere along the height, these three slices all have the same area. So according to Cavalieri's principle, which of these solids have the same volume? Right. By Cavalieri's principle, these three solids all have the same volume. Now let's look at a slightly different example. Here's a square pyramid and a cone, and notice that they have the same height. But the area of the cone's base is four times greater than the area of the pyramid's base. In fact, if we look carefully, we see that everywhere along the height, the cone's cross-section has four times the area of the pyramid's cross-section. So how many times greater is the cone's volume than the pyramid's volume? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. You've done some excellent work here. To summarize, Cavalieri's principle in three dimensions says that if solids have the same height and matching cross-sectional areas everywhere along the height, like these three solids here, then they must have the same volume. Here we'll come up with a formula for finding the volume of a pyramid. Here's an example of a pyramid. This one has a square base 
and all the corners of the base are connected to this point up here, which is known as the apex of the pyramid. Now to find the volume of a pyramid, we're first going to need the volume of a cube. So take a look at this cube over here, and let's say its sides all have length h. What's the volume of this cube in terms of h? And if you'd like to review how to find the volume of prisms like this one, click down here instead. Exactly. To find the volume of any rectangular prism, like this cube, you can multiply the length, width, and height. So that's h times h times h. So the volume of a cube with side length h is h cubed. You'll be using this fact again in just a moment. Next, let's look at this pyramid over here, whose base is a square with side length h. In this pyramid, the apex up here is also a distance h directly above this corner of the base. Let's just give this pyramid a quick 360 degree rotation. As you can see, the apex really is directly above this corner. Let's find the volume of this pyramid. And to do that, let's add two more copies of the pyramid, which we've colored red and blue. Let's just give all three of these pyramids a spin, so you can see that they really have the same shape and size. And because they're the same, all three have the same volume. So brace yourself, this part gets a little crazy. We're going to fold these three pyramids up, and together they make a cube. Let's also give this cube a spin, so you can see it from a few different perspectives. And so by piecing together these three identical pyramids, we've made a cube with side length h, whose volume you already found. So let's unfold this cube back into the three pyramids, each of which has a square base with length and width h, and also a height h, meaning this distance from the base to the apex. So what's the volume of one of these pyramids, like this red one over here? Nicely done. Each of these pyramids has a volume of one-third times h cubed, because together their volumes add up to h cubed. At this point, try using the volume formula you just found, one-third times h cubed, to find the volume of this pyramid here, whose base is a 2 by 2 square, and whose apex is also a distance 2 directly above one of the corners of the base. So far we found that the volume of a pyramid, whose base is a square with side length h, and whose apex is a distance h directly above one of the corners of the base, is 1 third h cubed. But what if the apex is somewhere else, like above the center of the square base? To find out, we'll be using Cavalieri's principle which says that the volume of a solid stays the same when you cut it up into really thin slices and move the slices around. So imagine cutting this pyramid up into lots and lots of thin slices and then moving them. As an example, we'll approximate the pyramid as 20 slices. So let's move these slices around. The volume of the entire pyramid is the sum of the volumes of all these slices. And because we're just moving them and not changing their sizes, the volume of this whole pyramid is not changing. So notice that we can put this top slice directly over the middle of the base. Let's see that one more time. Now the top slice is over the corner, and now it's over the center again. So by Cavalieri's principle, this pyramid here has the same volume as our original pyramid. So now the apex is directly over the middle of the base, and the height of this pyramid is still h. By height, we mean the perpendicular distance between the apex and the base. So this line representing the height makes right angles with every line it intersects in the base. Okay, so what's the volume of this pyramid in terms of h? Exactly. So by Cavalieri's principle, the volume of a pyramid with a square base with side length h and an apex that's a distance h directly above the center of the base is also one-third times h cubed. By the way, pyramids like this one, where the apex is directly over the center of the base, are called right pyramids. Next, try finding the volume of this right pyramid. Its base is a square with side length 6, and its apex is a distance 6 directly above the center of the base. So the volume of a right square pyramid, whose base has side length h, and whose height is also h, is 1 third times h cubed. Now another way to write h cubed 
is h squared times h. h squared also happens to be the area of this pyramid's base, because it's a square with side length h. So if we call the area of the base a, then we can plug in a for h squared in the volume. And so an equivalent formula for the volume of this pyramid is one-third times the area of the base times the height. This formula turns out to be the volume for every pyramid. Let's see if that's true. So far we've been looking at pyramids like this one, where the height is the same length as the sides of the base. But let's try finding the volume of a pyramid with a different shape, like this one over here. The height of this pyramid is also h, but the sides of its base each have length 2h. So what's the volume of this pyramid? To find out, let's first look at the bases of these two pyramids. Now both bases are square, and the base on the left has side length h, while the base on the right has side length 2h. The area of the blue base is h times h, or h squared. What's the area of the green base? Right. The area of this green base is 2h times another 2h. We can combine the 2's to get 4, and we can combine the h's to get h squared. So the base of the green pyramid has an area of 4h squared, which is 4 times greater than the area of the blue pyramid's base. So let's rotate these pyramids back to the way we found them. Not only is the base of the green pyramid 4 times greater, if we look at slices of both pyramids at the same height, the area of the green slice is always four times greater than the area of the blue slice. Let's see those slices one more time. So if every slice of the green pyramid is four times bigger than the corresponding slice from the blue pyramid, how many times greater is the green pyramid's volume than the blue pyramid's volume? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Exactly right. So you already found that this blue pyramid, with a height h and a square base that also has length h, has a volume one-third h cubed. That means the volume of this green pyramid is one-third h cubed times four. Let's rearrange these expressions a little. Over here, we can rewrite h cubed as h squared times another h. And we can do the same thing over here, splitting this h cubed into h squared times h. Next, since we're multiplying all these terms together, their order doesn't matter. So let's move the 4 in front of the h squared. Over here, we have 1 third times h squared times h. We already said h squared is the area of this pyramid's base, and h is the height of this pyramid. And over here, we have 1 third times 4 h squared times h. You found that 4 h squared is the area of this pyramid's base, and h is the height of this pyramid as well. So for both of these pyramids, the volume equals one-third times the area of the base times the height. This is true for all pyramids. The volume equals one-third times a times h, where a is the area of the base and h is the vertical height, meaning it's the length of the perpendicular line connecting the apex and the base. Now this formula, one-third times the area of the base times the vertical height, still works when the base of the pyramid is not a square. Now here's a pyramid whose base is a rectangle. The formula you found, one-third times the area of the base times the height, still works. So try finding the volume of this rectangular pyramid. Now because of Cavalieri's principle, the pyramid volume formula still works no matter where the pyramid's apex might be. The volume of any pyramid, whether it's a right pyramid or an oblique pyramid like this one, is one-third times the area of the base times the vertical height, which is seven for this pyramid here. So try finding the volume of this oblique rectangular pyramid. Nicely done. Let's finish this lesson with a real-world example. Here's a picture of the Great Pyramid of Giza located in Egypt. It stood the test of time for thousands of years, and it's composed of countless individual blocks, each of which weighs about 5,000 pounds. Suppose you wanted to count the total number of blocks in the pyramid. To do that, you could count them one at a time, which might take a while. A faster way would be to divide the total volume of the pyramid by the volume of a single block. To find the pyramid's volume, you'll want to know that it has a square base with a side length of about 230 meters, and the pyramid's height is about 140 meters. 
and each block has a volume of about one cubic meter. So approximately how many total blocks are in the Great Pyramid of Giza? Very well done. There are more than two million blocks in this pyramid, so it's a good thing we used the pyramid volume formula and didn't count the blocks one at a time. And using the fact that each block weighs about 5,000 pounds, you can calculate that the whole pyramid weighs more than 10 billion pounds.